Hey, Patrick, it's Chris. Yeah, Chris, what's up? I wanted you to walk me through what you said yesterday. I know it wasn't very much, but I wanted to be able to do some research on uh, the uh, the provisions that you were saying underneath the Federal Reserve Bank and walk me through the stages of what you were talking about. Can you do that for me? Okay. <coughs> First off, you need to go into uh, the Federal Reserve Bank discountwindow.org website. FRB Discount window, all one word, dot org. Okay, got it. All right. I, I posted some links up there on uh, the site, and uh, Tom's also got them posted up there. Okay. Uh, yeah, to explain or to basically substantiate some of this stuff Okay. about the Federal Reserve. I've got it. Now, is what's going on, okay? The Federal Reserve Bank has to have collateral before they can issue money. Okay. Okay. No matter what form it's in, they have to have, uh, because they're the only ones that can issue money. Okay. So they've got to have collateral. Well, where do they get the collateral? They get the collateral from us. Okay. By way of the state or whoever, the banks, the state, uh, the different organizations. All right. This falls a little bit like what uh, uh, Walter Buren was talking about with the CAFR accounts. Isn't that correct? Well, yeah, it does. It's, it's all under the CAFR in a way. Uh -huh. See, he didn't understand the whole CAFR system about the monetary system. Understood. Okay. Yep. See, in 1871, the government, the United States government, created a United States Fidelity and Guarantee Company. Okay. Okay. That is the Constitution of the United States of America. That was the second uh, issuance of the... The second... Corporation, yes. Okay, all right. Company. All right. And see, that's all of The first one was we the people created the Constitution for the government. That's right. Yeah, so there's <clears throat> two different words there, for and all of Well, it makes perfect sense because all statutes, codes, and regulations have to be individually bonded Anytime that they use each one of those in any capacity, it again has to be bonded. So you're correct about the assurance. Well, they see all things that Congress and the Senate pass are bills. Now, someone has to pay those bills. Yeah. Okay? There's a debt. And they see they use our collateral, we the people... Okay, out here, not the people, but we, the people's persons, as the collateral. Right. That that would be the assets that are being held, maybe in relations to the alien uh, property custodian. No, no. They're being held in uh, the federal, in the de jure government of the Treasury for the Libra Code and several other items. Okay. Okay, Lincoln basically uh, put this into place to protect the assets of the country from the corporations. Yes, I agree. Okay, now we were given a uh, a uh, just a second. I gotta think of what the hell I'm gonna say. Well, wasn't it? We were given, we were given a letters patent, a royal letters patent. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, if you watch the movie Jupiter Ascending, okay, mm -hmm. it's a 19 or 2015 movie. Yeah. Jupiter Ascending. Well, basically in there, before she could get her inheritance, she 
she had to go get her tax ID numbers right in the movie. Yeah, well, they actually, somebody got uh, ingenious about that, and they actually clipped out all that information you're talking about, and they micro-created a YouTube that included all of what you're talking about, and I watched that YouTube. Okay. Well, I haven't seen that. Uh, well, I, I if downloaded I, the movie, and I was watching it, and I said, holy shit, <laughs> this movie said exactly what the shit I've been saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll pass it to the I'll pass it to the Patrick Divine group because I was uh, pretty amused when uh, one of my other uh, research buddies he uh, told me about the movie. So I was poking around and seeing if I couldn't get some of the clips. Somebody actually manhandled. They took all the clips and they put it on a a probably a five minute uh, uh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah, and uh, let's see, we had our. A state EIN, and our, or I had my state EIN, my foreign grant trust EIN, uh, five years ago. Yeah, yep. And yep. I was missing one item. And that's all it takes. Was that individual bankers, okay, we had to come in. See, we got two bank accounts, so we didn't have a bank for the bank accounts. That's right. So are you saying that the EIN number that we obtain as being the private banker is the account number? Is that what you're really saying here? It is the fiduciary over the checking and the savings account. Okay. Okay. It, and see, he is the CFO of our private bank, but he's an individual CFO of our private bank. Now we can deal as a private bank with the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay. Okay. And, uh,. You have to fill out Form 56-S, not the 56, but the 56-F. You're talking for about the, the fiduciary. EIN and for the Foreign Grant or Trust EIN. You're, you're talking about the 50, uh, the 56-F is the fiduciary, financial fiduciary. Or a financial, yes. Okay, right. And see, at the very bottom of that form, okay, mm -hmm. the authorized agent for the a uh, financial institution or the fiduciary is our individual banker, and he has to put his EIN number there. Okay, the so same way on a ten forty one form. Okay, so a ten forty one has to accommodate that. Well, no, not necessarily. Okay, a ten ninety nine A, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you said that. We don't need to do the ten forty one at this point in time because that goes into the IRS. We're going and basically putting this all in to the federal discount window with the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not the home uh, place for the de jure, uh, 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 the de jure U.S. Treasury Bank. That is the main place. Yeah. Where, did, where was the uh, where was Benjamin Franklin from? Philadelphia. That's where right. was the first post office? Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. That's right. the de jure home. Of basically the country. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. And then basically they moved the capital down to D.C. and uh, in the process made it federal. In other words, they can uh, they, they they converted what was uh, innocent enough uh, the de jure into a federal item. Well, it, yeah, but then it also became a company uh, conclave also. Okay, it's got two functions at ten miles square area. Yeah. Well who who owns this uh this uh the fidelity and uh assurance co who actually owns that? Is that the city of London or is it the royal family over there in England? Who owns it? It is copyrighted out of the Bank of London. Is that the government side or the city of London? The bankers. That one okay. mile square yeah. in London. That's city of London. Okay. Yeah. All right. And this is a banker city. It's not, there is no, probably any people really living in that area, but it's the banking, the financial hub for like New York City. Okay. Now, we have to do an estoppel by deed, and 
see, that's what everybody should have been doing with their mortgages, was doing an estoppel by deed. So they is that be attaching the living to the dead mortgage? Uh, so is that an act under the authority and jurisdiction of equity law, or which jurisdiction would that be brought under? That is under Roman civil law. Basically, you're coming in, and you're it's under Gaius, G A I U S. Okay. The Institute of Gaius. All right. And see, we are an American Roman citizen. Yeah. Okay, because we are under the Roman law system. That's right. Play over iron, okay? That's the chaos of the lake. The last part of the statute of Nebuchadnezzar is clay over iron. The clay is the codes of law right. that is covering over the real law underneath. Yeah. And, and see, we are people. We are not persons. That's correct. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. Yeah, and see, that's covered in uh, the preamble and also in uh, Article or uh, the Bill of Rights uh, Amendment uh, 9 and 10. It says people. It doesn't say persons. Now, the 14th Amendment, and see, the 13th Amendment doesn't say anything about either persons or people. It just talks about indentured servitude. Yeah. Now, the 14th Amendment comes along, and what does it talk about? It talks about persons. That's right. Yeah. And see, we as the living do not come under for the uh, 14th Amendment. That, Only well, that's, fictions do. But uh, the, the natural default that they set you out, uh, unless you actually manhandle and change it, is that you are a corporate person. That's the problem with the 14th. Well, that's the problem that people don't understand. Yeah. Okay, Just like in that movie, uh, uh, Jupiter Ascending. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. She had to go in and prove that she was the living entity. Yeah. Okay. Um, See, that certificate of live birth is a death certificate. It's not a living certificate. <clears throat> what uh, the living doesn't need a certificate. What would be Only the the dead does? I'm sorry. Um, what would be the commands uh, that you would direct the Federal Reserve Bank at their discount window as to? I mean, you would do the estoppel for sure. But what would be the other commands or orders that you would uh, have them do? We're coming in to basically uh, claim our collateral. Okay. Okay, I see. And that is Chapter 17, again, uh, Operating Procedure Number 10. Okay? Mm -hmm. Also in Operating Procedure Number 10, you go to Appendix 3, and it's got a, sort of like a template letter that you can modify. And, and then it's got uh, the next two pages. There are, I think it's two pages, are there for a, uh, uh, the banking, uh, your, your banking document. And then basically the third page is, uh, they have, they're using the SC form okay, which is for all the other Federal Reserve Banks except for Philadelphia and uh, uh, St. Louis. St. Louis doesn't need one, and Philadelphia has a special one. They have a uh, uh, 03 or form or something. But the form that they have there, uh, you would send like in, if you're going to do a transaction out of uh, Atlanta, Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta using your uh, uh, Social Security account number, okay, mm -hmm. coming in and doing a draw against that. But see, you have to do it in a certain format in the process. You have to give them a Form 56F for both accounts. You have to send a note, uh, an, an uh, endorsed certificate of live birth. Uh, any other certificates that you have, driver's license, uh, 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 certificate of title to your vehicle, certificate of title to your 
property. I see. Okay, and uh, are, are, uh, um, this um, uh, it, are these called the uh, the um, uh, what are they used to call the circular operation? Uh, yes, operating circulars. There's twelve of them. Okay, good. That's what I I wanted to make sure that I um, I got that. Okay, All right. But the only one that we really need to concentrate on, from what I can see is this operating circular number 10. 10. Because, see, we're coming in as the borrower. Okay. We're not the lender on the 1099A. We're not the creditor on the 1099C. We're not the payer on the 1099B. We are the payee, we are the uh, debtor, and we are the borrower. Yeah. Our, our, a state or a foreign grant or trust person, they are the borrower, the credit or the debtor, and see, do they need to pay it back? No. But is what we have to do to get credit, we have to make it a negative value on the 1099A. Got it. See, in their world, all debt is positive. All credits are negative. Only in the real world is credits positive and debt negative. All right. Um, okay, and you, you, has anybody uh, done this yet? Or? That's what we're all working on right now, trying to get this all formed up. All right. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of research today, and I may call you back. Uh, I think that you gave me enough information for me to pursue this. The reasons why I'm taking a liking to it is because some of my other comrades in the past 10 years have literally disappeared, and they didn't disappear for mysterious reasons. Is They gave me enough information that as soon as they did their private banking with the Federal Reserve Bank, is they're out of there. And I'm sure that there's a gag order that comes along with this is that you're not to share this stuff with anybody else. So that is the reasons why they're no longer around. But they gave me indications before they actually attempted doing it is that they believed back then that they were on their way out. Well, now some people have gone and they're only first way out. They never really did claim everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Using, they may have only had one of the the estate EIN, and not the foreign grant or trust EIN. I agree okay, with you. So they may have only picked up the estate assets, the uh, assurances that were due, the rents due, mm -hmm. but they never picked up their letters of credit, their collateral, and took it off the table. And then in how, some how, cases, that collateral is still sitting there. Okay, is are you in this case? Are you comparing or saying that the letters of credit and the letter of patent are one and the same, or how are you comparing no, those two? No, they're two different entities. Okay, all right. Okay, we have uh, by birth. Okay, like I said before, America. The first four letters of America are Amer. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or Amer. Okay, which is the same thing as the uh, first five letters of Admiral, Admir, mm -hmm. okay? And they both mean Prince. We are a Prince of America. Okay. Okay? And that is royalty. We were given our inheritance at the age of one year after the date of conception. So three months, 90 days after, well, that fits right into all of the, it's a classical uh, law and canons that says that any instrument to, to its perfection is 90 days. So if you're nine right. months and you got three, three months, that would equal a year right there. That's right. And see, that's what I've been saying all along. Yeah. Well, it makes years. sense. I mean, it's falling, you know, what, what you're saying is falling into place for me. And here again, this is the reasons why I was inquisitive. Uh, you know, I'm working in a different vein, which is not too far from where you're functioning from. But uh, in order for me to put the stuff together in my brain, I needed to have a chance to talk with you about it. So there you go. Yeah, I see. 
this is not uh, uh, what these other guys were doing was a use of Pratt trying to say that that was the process. Yeah, I didn't that really. Is, I, I didn't really care too much for the use of Fructor. I mean, yes, it, indeed, it's there. Uh, and yes, indeed, the Libre Codes, the Reconstruction Act, all these things are there. But the thing is, is that I think that cut to the chase, I think you're closer now than you have been in quite a while. I do believe that the conservator and the conservatee relationship is we've been going to the wrong party. We need to take these issues to the Federal Reserve Bank because ultimately in this bankruptcy, they are the final word. Yeah, but see, we're going to the Federal Reserve Bank, but we're going to the Treasury. Yes. The your Treasury within the Federal Reserve Bank, which is basically the fiscal agents in those banks. Okay, so you're saying that within the conservator of the Federal Reserve Bank, there is a provision or a department in there that actually is the de jour form that we can get remedy and relief? Yes. All right. Now, why Philadelphia? Well, because it was the, it, actually it was the original jurisdiction for all of the de jour to, uh, to uh, be spawned, uh, to, to, to uh, you know, um, it, it was the original place that America actually was spawned at. Well, no, there's something else. All right. Okay. How many mints are there in this country? Uh, geez, uh, uh, I'm just going to take a wild guess, five. There's Denver, there's uh, San Francisco, there's... Uh, Carson City. Uh, yeah, uh, Philadelphia is one, and uh, Carson then City. also uh, D.C. has a mint. Yes, they have okay. a mint there too, yeah. Okay, but there is only two mints, mints, they have custodians. Okay. Philadelphia. You know which two they are? Philadelphia is one, and the other one would be Washington, D.C. Yes, Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. Yep. See, the I get Custodians. A, I, I, I get an A plus on my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try and give as much information as I can so you can all <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've been in this for so damn long. I mean, it's just, uh, it's almost common common information at this point. But no, those are the two that I would deem as being the custodians. Well, what would that necessarily have to do with what I found out and that the attorney general of the state and the controller of the state are two sides of a coin, which are the custo uh, they are the custodians of the alien property uh, uh, custodian. I found I found wow. this out through the Reconstruction Act. I found out that the Attorney General and the Controller of the State are the two sides of a coin that are doing the uh, uh, alien property custodian. No. Yeah, this is uh, what I found not out. Not necessarily. Okay. Is what uh, the Controller of the State is doing. Okay. He is overseeing uh, the. Fidelity side of the state contracts. Okay, the state of Iowa is the it's the Iowa Fidelity and Guarantee Company, just okay. like the United States Fidelity and Guarantee Company in Washington D.C. Well, are they still in business? Is my question, or have they converted? Oh yes, yes, these guys are. They can't, and, and unless the whole insurance system shuts down. The driver's license and everything else, the mortgages, the property taxes, all of that shuts down. They're still in existence. And you're saying you're saying that the controller is kind of the crux of that catalyst between the merchant law, I mean the merchant uh, uh, assurance and these items that are being securitized. You're saying the controller is the, the, the key here, right? He is the controller of the collateral. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Got it. The yeah. attorney general is basically he is. We have to come to him with our negative uh, items to do the set off against the debt items, like 
to property taxes. We have to give them the native credit to release the credits yeah. from our account. Well, that makes sense. That that makes sense. On on the public side, you would want to do your debt relief through the attorney general's office because they're the holder of the charity, and that they're uh, they, they will issue charity in these different charitable things that they've got. No, uh, no, they are the holder of the scales. Well, Justice. It's basically one and the same. Yeah, balance. Because they have to give equal justice. Exchangement because the, the the between the controller and the attorney general's office is all warrants are are, are funneled through both of those. Uh, that means that a five hundred one c three that issues a warrant, which is the territorial court system that they've got as a debt collector, when when they do a sanction or a warrant against you, they send it to the attorney general uh, office as to get compensation through the charitable trusts. Is what they're doing, they're doing an estoppel against you. But that's all they're doing, is an estoppel. Oh, but that's a commercial estoppel. Yes, it's a commercial estoppel. That's okay? right. That's what the police officer does when he pulls you over. He's doing an estopping of you. Yeah. An estoppel. Yep. Yep. Okay? Yep. Now, you have your estoppel by deed as being the living over your more domain accounts, now you have the higher estoppel. It's estoppel against estoppel, and yours overrules theirs. They're dead in the water. So in other words, what you're saying is the substance overrules uh, form. Right. We have to come in and merge our living, our certificate, our baptismal certificate or our Bible entry saying that we are the living flesh and blood to stand over a mortemain fictional account on I, BERSAC. I, I like that. Uh, that. That actually politically puts it in the proper contents uh, as far as it goes for the wording. Uh, I do appreciate right. that. Yeah, go ahead. And see, so you come in as a people over the persons. And see, that's also in Gaius. If you read the first uh, book of Gaius, uh, the Institute of Gaius, it talks about persons. And then the second book talks about property. And but then I think the third book and the fourth book uh, talk about inheritance and different things along that line. But your, your, uh, the, the whole idea of your estoppel that you put in there would necessarily reflect that under the emancipation is that you can actually distinctly tell the difference between a form or a substance and that uh, in, in your uh, estoppel you need to define how the emancipation that uh, once you have identified the fraud that is uh, overthrowing the substance is that this is part of the reasons why the estoppel that you're putting in there uh, has to be more effective uh, effective over the form. Right. And see, they're, they're holding our assets in a mortimate. That's against the law. Yeah, I would say so. I like it. Oh, I, yes. I really do. I like I like where you're thinking right now. You're you're, you're thinking very clear, and it, it hits it hits the same bell of success for me. Uh huh. And oh, uh, so we just need to get this all pulled together and put mm -hmm. this down. Right. And that's why I've been trying to get people for the last two weeks to sit, get down, and read those Federal Reserve documents. Yeah. And uh, uh, come up with ideas or whatever. Uh, Try and prove me wrong. Well, I kept telling uh, one of my little groupings of people, I kept telling him that you can bequeath debt, and you hit it on the bell with the Federal Reserve Bank, is because they see that debt is credit to them. When you bequeath your debt, therefore it becomes a credit to them as to, to go ahead and handle it. So when you bequeath something from your estate, such as debt, it should be zeroed out or handled or paid for. Right, and see, so you're coming in under H.R. 192, uh -huh. uh, and also under uh, 28 uh, U.S.C. 411 and 95A, 2A, or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Also, which Mo which Morris had uh, some information on his 
about doing, uh, utilizing lawful money. Okay, and that's what the Lever Code also addresses in the process. Well, okay. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that you have uh, really whittled it down. And as I am kind of like standing in a different nature at this point with different things going on in my own life, I do admire that you have gotten to the Federal Reserve Bank and that you are going through that. And I think that I, I truly believe well, that. Well, I was I was at the Federal Reserve Bank at Minneapolis. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. five years ago. Four or five years ago. Well, we've all been there. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> I've been through this and same see, industry. I was using Usaprac <laughs> stuff back in 2008, okay, seven years ago. And then Morris all of a sudden started getting on to that uh, about two years ago, two and a half years ago or whatever. And basically, I'd already gone through all that, and it didn't work. Okay, well, it's... it's this in fact is just a process that they're using of renting our assets. Yeah, and I have to agree with you. And so many of the things and phases that we've been through, including the dissolution at the state level of a uh, unidentifiable and or an unincorporated entity that was not by consent, all that paperwork is still valid. And the reasons why is that once you put everything in proper contents that you are the power of attorney over that estate, is that becomes the actionable authority. It cannot happen otherwise, Pat. Yeah. Well, don't, don't use attorney. Well, I use personal representative, okay. but you I've got to use keep... banker. Banker is the highest level out here. He yeah. who has the money controls the situation. Attorney don't have no money. He can't control shit. That's right. Well, he can, yeah, he's but... Just, he's just out there playing with laws. But the one that controls the money, like uh, Rothschild said, I can pull the money, I can control the laws. Yep. Well, you're correct about the, uh, in fact, I actually had a little powwow with uh, Thomas last night, and I politically corrected that situation with one thing that you said that really struck the bell. When I went to the bank to open up these foreign trusts, they, I ran into a situation of where the estate number was not adequate. They could not accept the estate number. And when you said that we need to get an EIN number for private banking purposes, I knew exactly right then where I had to go and open up an EIN for private banking and what they told well, me. It's not for private. It's, it's an individual banker's identification number. That's okay? right. That's right. That's what no. I'm saying is, is that he they, is an employee. He is an employee of our private bank. Our private bank doesn't have a number. It's private. They needed they needed an identification number, and they accepted it as a private banker EIN number. Well, yeah. that you're you're best off if you use go into the dictionary and look up private banker versus individual banker. Okay. A private banker is a corporate banker, a chartered banker under the jurisdictional control of the state. You don't want to be a private banker. Okay. Now, so you have to have a state charter well, as a private banker. But as an individual banker, you don't need one because you're working for a private bank. And the private bank don't have to have a charter. Well, that was the way it was set up because it was set up on the foreign trust and it was set up as an unincorporated uh, uh, entity of which fell a under the 508. Your back pocket is your billfold. You don't have to have a number on your billfold. Yeah, tell that to the bank when you open an account. Well, you don't want to open an account with a commercial bank. That's the problem. You don't want to deal with the commercial banks. Why would you, if you're a private banker, why would you need to go to a commercial bank? You can go directly to the Federal Reserve and have them send a Brinks truck down with a load of money if you need it. Yeah, but we're talking about two different uh, systems here. If you're going to be functioning in the public, yes, you have to have this stuff. But what you're talking about on the private, those are two different things. 
No, I'm talking about the same thing. When we get out of the system, we will have a debit card directly linked back to the Federal Reserve. We will be able to go into that Federal Reserve Bank and do a conversion, and they will be able to process it into a debit card for us. Well, I still like that idea, and the reasons why I like it is because administratively it bypasses the judicial aspect of the county that I have already confirmed. Uh, it just bypasses the whole kit and caboodle. I like it. So uh, I'm willing to pursue it and work with you to we, so we can all get this thing but done. Just look at all certificates. Uh, they are for the dead, okay? Yeah. They are a mortimane account. Yeah, there is. A letter of credit, okay? We had to give them a signature on the right-hand side of the document. Uh, you mean vertically? Well, no, basically uh, horizontally on the right-hand side of the contract. You oh, signed there, and then later on, they put your debtor person on the left-hand side of the mortgage. Because I thought it was obviously very interesting when I filed the common law uh, habeas corpus on behalf of one of my friends that's being uh, charged with murder, of which he's completely innocent. When I sent the common law habeas corpus to the judge, she had acknowledged and written me a gold embossed letterhead of her office. And when she took the document, she said she could not file those in the public, and that's what I asked her not to do, is to file them in the public, that the common law is private. And, uh, and she, what she did, she actually signed and sealed the left side of the vertical of those. He, every one of the pages are signed and sealed by her privately on the vertical. I could not even hardly believe my eyes. I've never seen a public official do something like this before. Yeah, and see, that's, you know why they did it on the left-hand side, don't you? Well, because it's the uh, private public, uh, you know, in camera. Well, it's because of the creditor and debtor. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. See, they are holding the debt that we have to come in and basically release the credits to pay to set off the debt. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, I've got to wrap this thing up. Uh, okay. But, um, uh, you know, Patrick, uh, are you still off a computer? Or you, what's happening with your uh, Internet? Uh, oh, I'm on the Internet now. And I'm on Skype, and basically I'm back on, uh, I get into the group site there, my computer. Uh, the linkage on it sometimes basically is not too fast. I don't know what the hell's going on here. I've either got a virus, i got to get a virus checking program and run that thing through it. Will you do me a favor? If you if you get any of these little hot items, just email that to me. You still got my email, right? Learn law. Well, you're on Skype, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'm on Skype too, yes. Ho, ho, ho. We got disconnected? That's almost unbelievable. <laughs> we just got disconnected, Jim. As soon as we start talking about it. All right. Yep, isn't that funny? We got disconnected. All right, so in that call.